it's one of those trips that will change your life. You know, when you come back, things are never the same. You see yourself differently in the world. You see our country uh, differently, how we fit with the rest of the world. I would, I would, I would tell the student to expect an adventure. One of the beautiful things about Ecuador is that it's a relatively small country with many different environments. And so you have um, the, the high mountains with snow-capped peaks um, right on the equator. You have valleys, the inter-Andean valleys, where many of the cities and towns are located. Uh, of course, the Amazon rainforest, which is, of course, one of my favorites. Um, we also go out to the Galapagos Islands, uh, located 600 miles off the coast of Ecuador, which is absolutely fascinating. Well, the study abroad opportunity is a short-term faculty-led study abroad opportunity. Um, it's, it's very good if you don't want to be gone for a whole semester for study abroad, if you have um, family, maybe a job, maybe you'd like to have an international experience, but you don't want to be gone for a real long time. Uh, we go down for three weeks and it's at the end of the summer and I schedule it that way intentionally so that if students would like to take classes in the summertime, um, they can do that. There's plenty of time in there to do your summer classes or if you have a job, you can do that and then the last three weeks of the summer we go down. It's like an adventure of exploring and learning and so you're going to run into different environmental uh, uh, changes in, um, in the weather, in the land, as uh, far as food that, that's available. Uh, some of it uh, we saw a lot of poverty but we, I learned that the people are able to, to live and, and, and go on and still have a very good spirit about being content with what they have. And that's one of the things that I picked up, is that they don't have much, but they're content with what they have, and they have, they have one another. The trip is kind of divided into three parts, I would say. We have the Andes Mountains, we have the Amazon Rainforest, and the Galapagos Islands. Um, when we're in the um, jungle, we're traveling by boat um, and on foot primarily because we're quite in a very remote place. When we're in the Andes Mountains, uh, we have our own private bus and we go and visit um, uh, Lake Kilatoa, which is an, um, an ancient volcano that has a caldera, that is a lake inside of it. We hike down to the lake and then ride mules back out, we usually bring along a, a lunch. And that's, uh, we're up at about um, 11,000 feet elevation there. It's uh, beautiful, clear skies, and uh, the local people come and talk to us, and they also have little things to sell, and they're hand, painting, hand paintings on uh, sheepskin that they do, they're quite famous for, and all kinds of hand-woven, handmade, crafty kind of things to buy. Um, and we also visit another uh, major volcano, Mount Cotopaxi, which um, is a major, major volcano. Uh, depending on the weather, we just never quite know um, how it's going to be, but we go up as much as high as we can. We usually bring our bus up to about 14,000 feet. And then from there, uh, we walk up as far as people want to go, or feel if you don't feel up to it, you can wait in the bus. Um, and that's true of most of our physical activities. I don't want to make it sound overly um, um, uh, difficult. The Amazon rain forest that I was, before we went, I was terrified. I didn't know what to expect about going to the Amazon rainforest, being in the middle of the jungle and staying for about five days. I didn't know what I was going to do. I, I didn't think I was going to make it. Uh, I kind of like, I'm one of those people that likes to chew on ice. And I know that we couldn't do anything. <laughs> we couldn't have any ice. We had to have bottled water. And I just didn't think I was going to make it. And it, the Amazon rainforest, it surprised me. I learned so much about plants, medici medicinal plants. Uh, I learned so much about the people, the indigenous people that live in the area. Uh, 
I, I walked across a catwalk, which was almost 100 feet in the air, I don't believe it, across the top of the, the trees and looked and got, I got a chance to see so many beautiful species of birds uh, and toucans. I, I watched a family of toucans play together in the, in the top of the trees. Um, I, I learned how to survive in a jungle. Well, you know, it's surprising, but it's not quite as hot as most people expect. It's almost, they call it fresh, fresca, in that um, <clears throat> it can be warm, but oftentimes it rains. Um, the rainforest, of course, by definition, has a lot of rain and just cools things off, and it'll rain just real hard for 10 or 15 minutes, and then sun comes out, and it's a beautiful day. Um, but I would say the mud is something to be contented with. And fortunately, they have boots, rubber boots, knee-high rubber boots that uh, fit everyone's various shoe sizes. And um, we all must have our rubber boots when we go walking in the jungle. Partly because of the bug, but also the little critters that are crawling around in the ground. And so um, uh, that's quite an adventure going walking in the jungle. But I would say for the most part, this trip is out in the country. We're out in the countryside, um, in agricultural areas, small towns, down in the jungle, out to the Galapagos. and. Um, we don't spend too much time in the city. We do, in between where we're changing, uh, sort of changing venues, we do spend a night um, when we're in, in Quito, in between a lot of our, uh, the different parts of our trip. And when we're in Quito, I should mention that we stay at the Sheraton Hotel. So this is, a, this is, a, is probably the most adventurous of our study abroad trips here at Eastern Illinois University. But I like to say it's a first class adventure because we stay at such nice places. And um, when we're in Quito, we stay at the Sheraton Hotel. Beautiful breakfast buffet, fantastic food, lots of security, um, Wi-Fi, you know, down, check your email. You can get email up in your rooms if you like. Um, so, <clears throat> um, yeah, it's a first class adventure, I would say. Well, about a third of the, uh, the grade is keeping the journal, and so you do keep a daily journal of your geographic observations. And I collect those um, a few, well, about a week into the trip to give you some feedback about, um, about how you're doing, suggestions for improvements, and what I'm looking for in the journals. And um, that's about a third. And then um, we also have activities. Uh, we bring along handheld GPSs, global positioning systems. Uh, we have topographic maps uh, for four or five of the different uh, regions that we visit. And um, you don't need to have any mapping background, but we show you how to use the GPS and, and how to plot your latitude, longitude. We talk about projections. And we have a number of lectures um, in the process. I would say some of our lectures, we do have, um, we have a, a room at the Sheraton for a few of our lectures, but a lot of them are um, at the lodges where we're staying or out in the jungle or on the bus or on the side of the road as we're traveling. Um, so we have the journal and then we have some activities uh, involving maps um, and we do have a test at the end. Uh, it's made me more appreciative actually of where I live. Um, I've, I've actually been asked a couple of times to come and teach uh, in the Galapagos. They were basically begging for me to come and teach English and also there's an area called the Chota Valley where the African-American uh, descendants of the slaves still live. They're called Afro-Ecuadorians and I actually did a report on uh, going to that area. Um, they wanted me to come back also to teach English and so I'm seeing possibilities for myself opening up you know in different parts of the world and that is so exciting. Well, I always say it sort of feeds the soul. It's, um, I think, you know, when you interact with other cultures, uh, the food, the music, the language, the friendships, it just, for me, I always say it sort of feeds my soul. There's something in me, and it's not, you know, an intellectual development necessarily. It's more of a human spiritual thing, too. So.